Monday, April 8th, 2024, we got the finals of the NCAA tournament. What a great basketball season it has been. Choppy, but still way better than last year. The worst season I ever had of any sport, which makes me up almost 8,000 units over last year's college hoops. Um, pretty amazing. Um, it was the worst season I ever had of any sport, so coming up above water in any way. I'm excited about it, and of course, I'm excited for Major League Baseball season. It's I've been, It's been going exactly how it should go choppy and hitting all the value in the lines we're not buying runs we're not buying points. we're not doing anything we're only going for good value out there and uh of course going to ride that all season and i think jay is starting to jump on board too joe boo boy boy joe boy joe shasty <laughs> That's a good one. You got me. You got me. I'm <laughs> we, oh, we're working on that one all morning. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> really good. But he looked good yesterday. And I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of these guys, you know, Chris is loving, you know, Joe Musgrove. We saw him get hit a couple times. And then last time out, he looked really good. You know, it's you can't just judge it. By one performance, it is a long season in baseball, unless you're, you know, some of these guys that just are always injured. Um, Chris, how's it going? Uh, it's a uh, certainly case of the Mondays, but uh, we'll get by. I just had a couple bad beats yesterday. The uh, Orioles closer couldn't hit water. He fell out of a boat. It was just one of those things where it's just... Looks good, and then uh, it looks good until it didn't. But we'll, we'll we'll get it back today. I have I have a feeling. Of course, it's Mondays with K Diddy. Costi is here with us, and I've got a special surprise for Costi. This one's going to come out of left field. I actually already own red bottom shoes. I didn't know this, but no I, way. I found no way. I found out this morning. Sure do. Look. What is that? These are my. Those are Quicksilver. Yeah. No, they're not. No, 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 no. I mean, by the store in Vegas. Look, I mean, they got the. I mean, yeah, you're right. Rasta colors. Rasta colors. Technically. I mean, yes. Technically. You're right. Yes. Little, little worn. I don't know where. I got. I buy them. I buy them ten at a time. I got a whole bag full of these things over there. Playing on fresh, fresh asphalt. With their shoes, I, man. These, got, these are I wear these like when you know when I go to the beach or surfing and stuff. So that just means I go to the beach and surfing a lot. Man. That's all it means. I got bags of these things. I got I buy them ten at a time, so I got a whole bag full of them. But I noticed this morning when I was walking outside with with Sam that I had these, and I was like, red bottom shoes, man. I'm like, I got to show Costi, man. Yeah, I mean the red bottoms, the real red bottoms are absolutely hideous. So for sandals. So I, I can't have the wife hate me if you ever wear those. If you wear those to the beach, people will laugh at you. If that, you have to like these ones, own... quick silvers. No, no, the real red bottoms. Because I mean, I'm you know so, I, I surf the big stuff, man. No one makes fun of my shoes or shorts or anything. <laughs> they see me standing out on the nose. Real red bottoms to go out. To, <laughs> you go out if you wear real bottom sandals and you go out surfing. Those people will look down on you. Yeah, that, well, you wouldn't. You'd wear these red yeah. bottoms. Yeah. Rasta colors. Green, you got the yeah. yellow, and then the red. Just watch that Bob Marley movie. It was actually really good. Yeah, we're looking forward to watching that. Chris, I want to talk to you about Coach Cal to Arkansas and a lot of you guys, and to Jay and Costi as well. You know, we knew that he was on the rocks at Kentucky. Um, kind of like a way to take a graceful exit because I think he was going to get fired. I really think he was on the border of getting fired. I think they were, I think what Kentucky does, you know, and this is the way they operate, they kind of scour the NBA, kind of scour around, see what they can get, um, and then, um, you know, kind of bring those guys in. Maybe they were calling Rick Patino to see if he wanted to come back. Um, you know, who knows? But uh, Coach Cal to Arkansas, which means that Kentucky job, which is the job in college hoops, is open. And... It is the job. Billy Donovan to Kentucky. You can see it. I can see it. 
Well, obviously, there's no there's no room for. I saw a tweet. There's no room for round of thirty two banners in Fayetteville, though. So you're gonna have to. Yeah, but the the expectation, <laughs> even though even though um, even though they might not say round of thirty two banners in Fayetteville, the expectations in Arkansas are considerably lower than they are in Lexington. Considerably lower. Eh, yeah, well, I, I think it's the expectations that come along with the coach, not necessarily. No, uh, Kentucky not necessarily is sure. Kentucky is always going to be. Kentucky. I, no, no, I know. I, there, there's obvious expectations with, with with Kentucky. I'm just saying we, we don't know if we should sell Arkansas's expectations short now because I think they're going to have expectations with Coach Cal coming in. I mean, this is a program that you know went to the Elite Eight twice. I think under Eric Musselman. I mean, no, they at least made it to the Sweet Sixteen. Must have been a nice pedigree when he came over from Nevada, but not to the level of Coach Cal. But now when you have the name brand of Coach Cal come in, I think there's some sort of expectation that just comes with him just, just by default. Jay, what do you think of this? I I, I think you're kind of right. I think it was more Kentucky told him after the loss, yeah, I, we think you should explore your options. And, uh, you know – Let's make it. Let's dress it up. And make it. Make it a peaceful exit rather than anything disastrous. And you know, Arkansas is a good spot for him. Um, I, I, I see what both of you guys are saying. Um, I think the expectations now will be raised at Arkansas with him there, but they are considerably less than at Kentucky. You know, can you know at their Final Four or bust, <laughs> like or championship or bust. You know, Arkansas. I think they're going to be fine with, you know, some deep playoff runs. You know, you know, like if there, it's not championship or bust every single year, uh, you have a chance to kind of build it up and make it in your image. So, you know, we'll see who we'll see who they go get. I still think it's, you know, probably one of the premier jobs on the planet. And the right name will probably get them back where they need to be. It's um, going to it has to be a big name. It has to be a big name, you know. Um, I'm I'm sitting here thinking I I don't I, your Billy Donovan is is solid. I don't I'm trying to think if there's anybody else off the top of my head that that I think, but I can't really think of nobody right now. Um, Jay somebody, Wright, I'll let you know. Jay Wright, that's a big name. He would have stayed at Villanova, I think, if he wanted to be in the game. Kind of like when Bill Cowher left the Steelers and then just never kind of coached anywhere else after that. Um, but, you know, you never yeah, know. That's a, big, that's a big job. Oh, it's it's the job. It's, it's the job. It's the right. job in, in college hoops. The, the job is Kentucky, North Carolina, Kansas. Those Dude. are kind of the job, you know. Um you know, the other ones are all, all come after that. Duke, Michigan State. Um, you know, there's, we've seen some coaches move around already. You know, we saw Enfeld, you know, leaving USC. And, of course, um, um, Holtman to DePaul. That was, so, I um, just uh, got us on the edge of our seat. I just kind of scoured the internet. Here's an article. Here's just a couple names they threw out there. Nate Oates from Alabama. Mm. I really love that. Scott Drew from Baylor. Billy Donovan is on there. Patino's on there. Patino. Hurley, Hurley's on the list. I don't think Hurley leaves UConn. Nah. No. You know, he's already built, you know, something really nice at UConn. I don't see him leaving. Sean Miller, the Xavier coach. No. After what fizzling out at Arizona, I don't think so. Mark Pope, the BYU coach. He did a nice nah. job this year. He's not Kentucky material. Yep. So that was just they're gonna cut. they're gonna go for those big names first, and if it does happen to end up being Pope, then it's Pope. But my guess is they have somebody in mind, and that the pay, that the, the the groundwork was already laid here in in this one. And um, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking it's you know maybe it is maybe the, maybe they did wait until Alabama was eliminated, you know, to to go for Oates. Maybe that is what it is. You know, but personally, I think that it's, um, you know, Billy Donovan is the move here or the return of Rick Pitino. You know, I can kind of see it being, you know, I think, all right, so he won there. You, he won of, there, all, you know? of everybody who I think my guess or who I wanted to be is Pitino. What about Tubby? Does Tubby come back? <laughs> no, no, Tubby. 
No Tubby. No? How about Saul Smith, Tubby's son? Kind of grown guy. Mm. I think they I think they're gonna go younger. That's my opinion. I think they're gonna go younger for it's that new generational coach where it's like they want to go younger, the the new mind, the the fresh at Kentucky. I think Nate, I know. I think Oates might be the guy. You, you, I kind of see the plan there. They waited for Alabama to go out, and now all of a sudden, you see the move from Cal Perry. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't have any inside information on who's getting the job, but from a perspective standpoint, it kind of feels that way. Yeah. I don't know. What if they try to? What if they try to buy out Tommy Lloyd? I just signed a new contract, but you you'd be a big one. What is, what are the list? What's the top of the list look like, Jay? One more time. Get back to it. I saw top of the list was Nate Oates. I don't know if this is necessarily in order, but this was just the guys on the list: Nate Oates. Scott Drew, Billy Donovan, Dan Bill, Hurley. I'm gonna say Billy Donovan, my with an outside Rick Patino and Mark Pope. With an outside um kicker. <laughs> outside I'm gonna I'm gonna put twenty bucks all the way to the outside here, and I'm gonna say Brad Stevens. I mean That'd be – I could see that. I, I, I see, see a, a potential Bruce Pearl. No way. I'm just saying. They said they have the personality they could thrive there. If anything, if it's a guy they're going to go after like that, it's going to be Kelvin Sampson. From, yeah. Is the guy they'll go after. It's that type of thing. I, I could see – I could see a Brad Stevens. I could see Billy Donovan – um, I don't know, man. What Kentucky players are out there that are coaching too? That they they like to stay with, you know. I think it's going to be Nate Oates. Uh, I, I just that's that's my that's my play here. It'll be interesting. We'll see. I don't know. Oh, what about the other Drew from Grand Canyon? Oh, Scott. Or uh, Bryce. Bryce Drew. Oh, yeah. Scott, yeah. Jay and and Roof were, well, maybe Roof was around. Jay was a little too young for that Bryce Drew Valpo shot in the tournament. Was that, that 90, was 97? No, I don't think it was. Uh, no, I think it was later than that. 98? See, John Calipari saying that it's going to be a former Kentucky player. He's yeah, saying, yeah. Um, you know, and he's saying um, John Wall. John Wall. <laughs> 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 Come on. Also, Tyler Eulis, part of the staff. Current Tyler Eulis, I could see. I could see. John Wall, no. Why? Because he'd be injured for half the season. He wouldn't be able to make it. On. <laughs> he'd, he'd get injured Tyler drawn on the whiteboard. Was more of a creator. He could game plan. He's He's got the mindset for it. John Wall is just an athlete. Like doesn't matter where. He doesn't have to think. He's just better than you. But that team was pretty good at Kentucky with John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins was on that team. Oh, yeah. They had a good team. So it was John Wall, Cousins. Who was the third guy on the team? Um, Didn't Rondo play for Kentucky? No. <laughs> yeah, that was before John Wall. Yeah, I can see, you know. <laughs> no, the best just... Kentucky team was when Booker was the sixth man. Booker wasn't even a starter. He was the sixth man. 
That wasn't Michael Kidd Gilchrist or anything like that, was it? Nope. It was John Wall, Jamal Murray. Right. Oh. Demarcus right. Cousins, Malik Monk. Yeah. Oof. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. These are not on the same team. These are not the same oh, team. Jamal Murray is on a different I was, team. Yeah, I was going to say, as soon as you started oh, saying I was like, wait, you sound like a little bit no, far No, I'm apart. just looking at best players. I was going to say, whoa. Eric Bledsoe was on that team. Eric Bledsoe was, yeah. Was on that team. That was the 09-010. 09-2010 Kentucky team. There's a lot of guys that could be there, man. Man, you look at the guys that have come through the Calipari administration here at Kentucky, and the fact that he doesn't have those banners just makes it really worse, you know? John Wall, Jamal Murray, DeMarcus Cousins, Malik Monk, Anthony Davis, Os- Oscar Tashiwe, Eric Bledsoe, Brandon Knight, Tyler Eulis, Aaron Fox, Shea Gugas Alexander, Emmanuel Quickly, Tyrese Maxey, Aaron Harrison, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Tyler Harrow, Ty Ty Washington, Kason Wallace, Willie Cauley Stein, Nerlens Noel, Carl Anthony Towns, Nick Richards, Terrence Jones, Kevin Knox, Keldon Johnson, Bam Adebayo, Julius Randall, and PJ Washington. And you don't have and more Booker. hardware than what? And Booker. Yeah, Seven. a lot, but there's a lot more guys than that. They were the, the one and done school forever. Crazy, man. Crazy. Anyways, we got basketball tonight, and it is the national championship game, as we always do here at Pick Dogs. We thank everybody that's contributed to our college basketball season. Of course, our great team of writers, which includes Chris, Randy Chambers, Andrew Jett. Shane, David, and uh, Corey. Did I get everyone, Chris? I believe I did. Thank I you to so. you guys that provided the written content. And of course, uh, Chris for doing all those videos that he did, as well as uh, Ron Romanelli. This uh, bank shop breakdown. Of course, all the people that appeared on all our shows, including Jay, who had to listen to us every day and partook. We coming. Join the hype thank train. Thank you. Go see hype train. Costy. Thank you. Things. Thank you for all the teams that provided our bits for the season. Yeah. And yeah, those bits will be back. Those bits aren't going anywhere. The hose. She helped us. Yeah. The the the, the shirts and helped us get through a lot of dark days in the in the NEC. Yeah, they certainly did. And the new edition of PFW Changs certainly was a welcome addition. Till we meet again, Jack Rabbits. Mm-hmm. You know. Our Blue first. Bit. First bit. one ho, red ho, one ho, two ho, red ho, blue ho. Until we meet again, we want to thank the beaches, Jay. What up, beaches? <laughs> the X, the X is formerly known as Twitter. Elon, and we can't and, forget our our potentially our newest goat, Duck Knees Nuts. Oh, duck and knees nuts. Love duck and nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Took it all the way to the NCAA tournament. But tonight got, new uh, that's my tonight. favorite. That's, look, if I could contribute anything in life, I contributed the nuts to Jay's duck and knees. It's just, you know, I'm just happy I could be a contributor. It's a good run, man. To meet again. <laughs> we need duck and knees to have a, uh, a good football program. <laughs> so we can talk about them in September. You guys just, just like it's... figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> this is sad. It just it's like we see like a like a like a montage of all the bits that are going away for the season. It's like they're playing boys to men in the background or something. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's be sad. In the end of the road, <laughs> can't let go. Tonight they'll have the uh, one shiny. One shiny. Moment. Moment. <laughs> I hate that. I hate one shiny moment. Game starts so late too. I hate that. Also, what's up with this eclipse, man? What's going on with this? Like, did you get the sudden, glasses? All of a sudden, it's an event. What do you do? I get glasses. Like, I give a shit about the solar eclipse. <laughs> I mean, seriously, man. <laughs> and what planet do I care about the solar eclipse? I've seen, I've seen them before. You know, I'm old. I've seen the other, the last ones, and the one before that. And, you know, it's like, 
I, I don't I don't care. I've never seen it. I have my glasses. They're in the kitchen. You know, Dallas is in the the path of totality. So I, I'm gonna be able to walk outside. And it's supposed to be completely dark. So I'm excited. And you know what you're gonna say? You know what you're gonna say? Big deal. That's <laughs> what you're gonna say. And then the next right, one's right, gonna we, roll around, and you're gonna be like me. Remember when Mitch? I'll be dead. <laughs> I'll be like. Remember when Mitch hated the eclipse? <laughs> it's like, he's a hater. He hates life. <laughs> you know, this happened right, in 2017. No, I don't think it was a full, though. It was I a think, full eclipse. No, I think it's the last full was 2000, um, was um, 1979. Was the last total. Uh, my eyelids are going to eclipse my eyeball stopped at that point. Coming out. <laughs> I was bored then. Bored with all these eclipse glasses. It's gonna the whole world's gonna gonna blow up. <laughs> like, and then go back to normal a minute later. Yeah, just like just like Y two K. That was Y2K crazy. Was, that was that was really everybody was just didn't under all the computers are gonna blow up. They're gonna turn to Terminator and they're gonna basically Also that the Mayans also believed that the that the world was gonna end. 1999. But that didn't work. No, it didn't happen. It happens. Anyways, the world's not going to end tonight. It's just going to be UConn versus Purdue. This one taking place in Arizona. Both these teams, um, you know, were in competitive games and were able to put the opponent away in the final four matchups, but a little bit of a different animal here. Jay, what are you thinking? You know, I think a lot of people think this line is quite disrespectful, but I don't think so. I think it's probably right where it should be. Um, a lot of people are sitting and hoping, waiting to cash them uh, Purdue futures. I know quite a few people with them, but I just don't see it happening. Um, UConn has smashed everybody. So what leads me to believe here that they won't get it done again? Edie, he's gained my respect over this postseason run, this March Madness run. He definitely has done that. All right, here's uh, the, oh, hang on, Jay, sorry. Here's the dumbass question of the day. Did something happen to Big Al? I'm, I'm missing it. What happened to Big Al? He's on the website, right? He's still there. Pick Dog's on the website. I talked I to him. Text from Big Al I got text day. from him every single day. I talked to him yeah. yesterday. Um, yesterday. <laughs> Big Al is still cooking, I'll tell you that much. Another big week on the All Access for him. I just think UConn is is too good, man. Um, I think they win the game fairly comfortably. I'm laying the points with Dan Hurley and uh, his UConn boys. What happened to Big Al? <laughs> I don't know. Did something happen to him? <laughs> Let me ask him. <laughs> Did something happen? He's just the guy I was asking because he hasn't been on the live shows. That's all. <laughs> oh, he's, but he's never been on this show. <laughs> no, I, just, no. I, just, I just see Mitch texting Big Al. You got the shits? <laughs> okay. Sounds like he has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> the guy's screen name is Applying 2024, which I'm not really sure what that means. It's like someone said something to me and it was like, oh, I can't remember who it was, but they like pointed to it and it was a bag of sprouted something. I was like, I did the, oh, no. whole, I did the whole bit. <laughs> the whole bit just came right back out. Costi hasn't been here for that bit. It's been a while. So Carrie, right. bought, Carrie bought the sprouted oatmeal. Like I used to eat oatmeal every morning. I haven't in a while, but she used to buy the, the oatmeal and then she got some different oatmeal at Costco, like a giant thing of it. And it was sp sprouted. It's like, you realize what that's going to do to my digestive system. 
<laughs> and then Ruffalo got into the whole sprouted thing, and we all it was it was. Uh, I mean, oh, anything yeah, that says that anything that says sprouted basically is going to be a train wreck through through our digestive system. <laughs> it's like yeah. that's pretty much what that means. Just, Raul's, yeah, there's like, there's Raul like, talk talking to himself in the comments. <laughs> He's having a conversation <laughs> with himself. Man. It's like, there's like there's there's like fiber that's nature's broom. This is like nature's Swiffer vacuum. Anything that's as sprouted, man, it's it's the Dyson vacuum, man. It's, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like it's like Costco when they drive those zambonis around to clean the floor. It's like this thing is like. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. Anything Aaron sprouted? Judge, Kosti, going you, deep again today. Costi, if you got anything sprouted in your house against knock knock, I, I'll I'll bet you Raul side wager. I'll bet you a hat bet on that one that he doesn't go doesn't go yard against knock knock. I'll, I'll bet you whatever. You, I'll bet you a hat. We'll go a hat <laughs> or one of our new pick dogs bobbleheads, which should be ready in a few weeks. Um, I'll bet you one of those or whatever you like. Um, you know, we can't bet money on the show, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bet he strikes out at least twice. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> uh, I'll bet he strikes. How about this? I'll bet he strikes out twice. You bet he hits a home run. If neither of them happen, it's a wash. If one of them happens, the, the other person wins. Um, I like my chances. If both happen, then we both win. I'll bet you a hooker and a sack of blow. <laughs> <laughs> can't, yeah, can't do money, but we can hookers and, and, and blow. Just keep, we can do that. It's like a tweaker. It's like he's still having a conversation with himself. He's not. He just refuses to acknowledge that I've acknowledged him. Chris, what do you think of this game tonight? Yeah, I, I like the over in this matchup. I think there's going to be points in bunches. We saw Alabama kind of execute the game plan of uh, how you can put points up on the board. You just got to be able to, to attack this uh, this UConn defense from all angles, and that is something I think. Purdue could potentially do, you know, Zach Eady inside going to provide some size. That's uh, UConn obviously not used to, but this is also a uh, Purdue team is shooting 39% from three so far in the tournament. So if for whatever reason Donovan Klingon can negate Zach Eady inside, Purdue does have shooters to be able to put points on the board. But this UConn offense has also been so good. I think Purdue is going to be in for a wake-up call here that uh, – yeah, they're going to get hit in the mouth with with a good number of points in this game. So I, I like the over. I think this game gets into the one fifties. Awesome. Yeah, I'm on. Um, I'm on the opposites here. Um, I like the under in this game. UConn holds their opponents, and just in general, to the under this season. Um, they play better defense. I think if Edie gets off to a good start, then obviously Purdue will rain threes. And if they make their threes, they can make this game competitive, which I do also lean to Purdue grabbing the points as well. I've been fading this Purdue team for a while. And I've just, what I'm seeing from Edie is he's so efficient with catching the ball and just turning around and just flopping it in there or a little teardrop or just a little hook. He's doesn't matter the size. If they double team him, he kicks it out and they have wide open threes. That's why Roof just said they, they're shooting 39%. They're most of them are wide open threes. They're not contested. And uh as good as this Yukon team is, I do think they're gonna be cutting down the nets. But uh man, this 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 is a tough one. So picking a side for me, I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to take the under here, take the sexy pick in the national championship game. I think it's uh, it's going to be a better defensive battle because both of these teams can play D. And um, I think it's going to go under the total. I think, uh, I think Purdue is in trouble, but um, that's just me. And I love the under in this game. I think this thing goes way under. 
Um, one forty-five and a half. This thing is looking at one thirty um, on a good day. We saw a lot, a lot of empty trips in that NC State Purdue game. There was probably an eight-minute stretch where no points were scored at all. Um, that's where UConn lives um, in those stretches right there, where it's just you know empty trips. They turn that into twenty-point leads, and I don't see Purdue having any answers to that. Um, I know they have you know guys that can play and all that other stuff. They're up against a little different animal here. It ain't Nebraska here, man, or Northwestern, the teams that beat you. Um, Connecticut doesn't have any Nebraska or Northwestern losses on their resume this year. They lost at Kansas when Kansas was at full strength. They lost against Creighton, you know, when they walked into a hornet's nest. It's like they don't have Nebraska and Northwestern losses. And, in fact, I would say that they would beat either of those teams by 35 or 40 points the way they're playing right now. It's going to be a bad night to be jumping on the dog here. Um, but I have to say that this thing stays under, way under. It's going to be a lot to a little. And, uh, it's kind of like Connecticut's made it look easy, and I think they'll start to talk dynasty and all-time great and all that other stuff will all come out, and then it's going to be a matter of how much they're willing to pay to keep these guys because UConn's got two players that are – rising stock in the NBA draft that are key players on this team. I don't think, um, I don't, I just don't think Purdue has the answers here. I think, I think those empty trips are going to kill them. This thing stays way under, too. Way under. First half under, second half under, game under. Fuck the Clippers. Hey, I got to give a quick shout out. Random shout out. I know many people don't care. I'm sorry. Shout out Cody Rhodes, man. Last night he did Roman Reigns. Ooh. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> you don't know so you don't mean, it's bad. That was cinema. That yeah, was that cinema. Was, was I don't know Cody Rhodes, but Dusty Rhodes was one of my very favorites, man. That was, you, you I, grew up, yeah. I grew up watching know. Dusty. We you always like went to go see Dusty. You know, at Miami Beach, Miami Beach Convention Center, every Wednesday night, go see Dusty. And he'd bleed. And somehow he was amazingly fatter than the last time we saw him. It was like he just got bigger and bigger. It's like Dusty put on some weight. And he always wore, like, the skinny little bikini bottoms. And then the, the, put the yellow polka dots. Yeah. The bion- he had the bionic elbow. He had it all yeah. going on. Tower of power, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. Stardust himself, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. That's how he talked about himself. That's how he introduced himself. (laughs) What you see is what you get and what you don't is better yet. Yeah, man. Let me tell you something, Gordon (laughs) Tholey. Let me tell you something about that jack. I was the son of a plumber. (laughs) Let me tell you something about that Jack Briscoe. (laughs) <laughs> and Rick, let me tell you something, Ric Flair. This was before, like way before then. <laughs> this was like that, that. Those promos were the glory days of professional oh, wrestling. Yeah. Oh, championship wrestling from Florida. But I, think... I grew up watching championship wrestling from Florida <laughs> with Gordon Soley. So long from the Sunshine State. That was a little later. I'm the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, that's <laughs> WW. That's w, that was WWF before they were WWE. Ultimate that's Warrior. WWF. Yeah. Sting yeah, was Costi, Costi, Costi does the Ultimate Warrior when he walks into the office and starts shaking Eric. <laughs> Not. <laughs> you need a lot. You need like 10 red people to walk in. But Dusty was, you know, Dusty. Dusty was good. Oh, he was Sting dream. put people when I was growing up in the sharpshooter all the time. Dusty was the American dream. <laughs> By the time he got to like the WWE and everything, he'd kind of already, you know, he, he was kind of already clearly, done at that point. The sharpshooter clearly didn't build up Costi's back from the push up. We could tell that much. The sharpshooter, it's like the lion can't can't more than anything. Dusty's, <laughs> Dusty's bleeding. The match hasn't even started yet. Oh, so, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> the sweet chin music where you just come up, just oh, tap yeah. your leg. It's on my Shawn Michaels. Dust. Yeah, we saw enough. We saw enough super kicks this weekend from the Usos. The bionic elbow. Yeah, I just had to shout out the WWE right quick, man. Great, great, great event. 
they, it's they a new era. Play. It's gonna. Be, I think it's gonna be good to watch again now. Terry think... Funk, Thor Funk Jr. The Million mm. Dollar Man put you in the Million Dollar Dream. The IRS with his uh. <laughs> he brought, oh yeah, yeah, mankind. No, that pack song was the claw, and then the oh, Von Erichs. Yeah, yeah, the Von Erichs. That the Iron Claw was a great movie, by the way. I saw Iron Claw. I watched it recently. I watched that good. one, and then the Men in the Boat. When I was going out to Vegas, and I fell asleep during the Men in the Boat, but I woke up and the boat was going across the finish line, and then I landed in Vegas. Oh. So I don't really know what happened in the movie, but I think they won. Yes. <laughs> Who's the guy? Waving a flag. Hate to ruin the ending for everybody, but I think they the rack. It's like you ever see um, that Eddie Murphy, the his the when he did the live movie. What was that one called? Oh man, he did the live Coming movie. To America. No, the, when he does a live concert, is the movie called? Oh. It was a live concert. It's Eddie Murphy. He's like does the whole Rocky thing, and he's like the guy's walking out of the movie. He's, he's like. Yo, I got to tell you, Rocco wins this. One. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to ruin it for you, but Rocco wins this one. <laughs> Raw. It's called Raw. Eddie Murphy Raw. If you haven't seen it, it's classic. Man. It is like, <laughs> talks about everything. Yep, Raw. It's awesome. How about The Undertaker? Like, back when I used to watch wrestling, he was mean Mark Callis. Then he came back, right. he was The Undertaker. That's, that's like, what I'm saying. So he came back last night. And mean Mark yeah. Callis, as Mean Mark Callis or The Undertaker? No, I the Undertaker. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. It's going to send absolute chills down your spine. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I'm not trying to get too deep into this, but... His tie into the match made zero sense to me, other than it was just a cheap pop for a WrestleMania spot with The Undertaker. I'm not complaining because it's The Undertaker. Nah. But I'm just was, saying for, for what the storyline was. Yeah. No, I know what I'm saying. For what the storyline was, his appearance just didn't make sense. Cena's made sense because he had the history with Solo Sokoa. And I Cena's made, made sense because he. Did. I thought it made sense because it's like. You know, the legends got to keep the legends in check. Rock, bro. Yeah. You, what What is you doing, bro? You you keep showing no. up, popping shit like you doing something. Come here. <laughs> well, he's, I didn't know this. Apparently, he's a shareholder. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Yes. The the legends got to keep the legends. Rick Flair? Yep. That's cool. Yep. <laughs> when you both had hair. Yep. That's cool, too. <laughs> Rock tank packing was feeling itself a little too. Much. I got my night. I got my Nike hoodie on there too. That's my old school one. one. From, Everyone's like, I, I have, oh thing. God! I have to. I can't legally say the name. I got to block out my finger. <laughs> the, my old company logo. There. Oh, <laughs> old company logo. New company logo. Old logo. Wasn't, I did like the hoodie though, man. I did like those hoodies. It was like more of an old school regular hoodie. Here I was, my Led Zeppelin. Is that what you do? Like you do the LeBron when he's on national televised games in high school, you put like the black tape over your tattoos. Remember that? I didn't even know. I didn't even realize I was wearing it. To black be tape over your old logo. <laughs> it was like, you only get like a couple of seconds there with Rick, but I, um, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't get up. I was talking old war stories <laughs> with them. You had to go. Think about Rick Flair. You stand within five feet. You get like a second hand high. You get like, yeah. <laughs> you get loaded by proxy. It's like, <laughs> yes, sir. But I just thought I'd bring it up quickly. Did you watch both nights or just one night? And I watched both. Did you watch the Hall of Fame? Uh. Who, who was in that one? Well, uh, uh, Paul Heyman was the only one that was like really oh, oh, watching. His speech. Yeah, his speech. Yeah, his, his speech, speech was beautiful. Yeah, his speech, speech was, was insane. Beautiful. Yeah, his speech was beautiful. Everybody got pissed because they feel like they shouldn't have put him first. Everybody else that came after him got screwed because like half the arena emptied out. But I'm not going to lie. After him, I kind of shut it off too. <laughs> So I was I was at a wrestling match at at the old Boston Garden, 
and the Iron Sheik got hit in the head with a dart from the crowd. True story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True story, man. He's oh wrestling. Someone threw a dart, man. It's sticking out of his head. It was like, holy shit. He's <laughs> wrestling. He's shaky, like, holy shit. Holy shit, man. Not going to lie, though. When he was alive, the Iron Sheik's Twitter was one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. The girl just, excuse me, see, it's even got me now. You'll just be sitting there and all of a sudden you'll see a tweet go, fuck Hulk Hogan. <laughs> it's like three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh. Shout out Cody though, man. Yeah, the heart punch. That was a great move. Lex Luger was in the steroid generation of professional wrestling. Loved Andre. I remember I when Andre had the big hair, man. When that first time I saw him, had the big hair. <laughs> man, we got we got a lot of wrestling aficionados in our uh, in our audience here. I'm surprised. I'm not. Well, I'm not surprised. Jay was gold. They say Jay's favorite wrestler was Goldust. I actually like gold dust. I like them. <clears throat> yeah, I can agree with that. Look at this. Comment. Seeing Undertaker as mean Mark Callis is weird. He just looked it up. <laughs> yeah. He was he was mean Mark Callis. I'm telling you. I remember yeah, but, but, I remember when they first unleashed the Undertaker like as the new character. I was like, isn't that mean Mark Callis? <laughs> <It's yeah>. like, <laughs> well, six, at the time, six foot ten wrestlers didn't grow on trees. It was like. About Razor Ramon would just throw his toothpick at you. Hey, Chico. Hey, Chico. Remember, Razor Ramon fought a no-name person, and he beat him. The no-name person beat him, and he became the one, two, three kid. Okay, that wasn't. Yeah, I was gonna say that wasn't the a no-name kid. Like, that, was, that was the one, two, three kid, and then the one, two, three. But kid. He wasn't a one, two, three body. kid yet. He was named the one, two, three kid because he one, two, three. Razor Ramon when he put him in the Razor's rack, and he got out of the rack. Flipped over. But he entered that match. But he entered that match as the one, two, three kid. No, he was nobody. Then he became the one, two, three kid, and then he became. No, I remember. No, I remember but I'm saying I thought six pop. Maybe he was the kid. He was. He was just like you know. It was one of those guys they fight that yeah, they're okay, nobody. Maybe, maybe. And he yeah, became. Maybe. He got out of the rack. Nobody's ever gotten out of the rack before. And he pinned him and became the one, two, three kid. And then eventually, I was going around high school doing this to everybody. He became X Pac. Man, when them lights went off last night, we heard that doom. I damn near cried. <laughs> just <for me. laughs> like I said, I just wish I just wish it tied in better. That's all. But I mean, it's like it's like a couple of guys in the comments said it was just a it was a cheap pop for the Undertaker. But I'm not sad about it. All right, I'll be back in one second. You guys wrestle while I'm gone. <laughs> also happened yesterday. Dante Exum at the buzzer. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Mavs, man, I better watch out for him. The NBA okay, season so for the we, for the like, record now. We're just get we're just getting this out right now so that we don't have to talk about it with Mitch. Screw the Clippers. I get it. Okay, yeah, we're done. Fuck them. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. I told you so. Just, just say it now so that we don't have to mention it when he's back. Yeah, but remember, I took them yesterday too. So <laughs> yeah, I know you did. I know you did. That's why I'm just saying. Okay, now, okay, we've, we've hashed it out. We're good. No more talk about the Clippers because I don't want to talk about him now. But get ready to talk about them because it looks like it's gonna be Mavs Clippers. Nah, shush. It's look like it's Mavs Clippers first round. We're gonna whoop their ass. I can't wait. But the NBA season coming to an end. We only got like some. You couldn't teams. believe there were no games today. I know. I know. Um, I kind of forgot that there's usually no games on National Championship Day, but like at the time of looking at it yesterday, 
it just kind of threw me off. <laughs> I was like, damn, there's a lot of games. And I was like, wait a sec, that says Tuesday. Yeah, yeah Jay, me too. That's kind of, that's Jay will have the jam session out early. Lines are already out for tomorrow's <laughs> game. So. Yeah. So, Where's uh, the jam session? Where's the jam <laughs> session for tomorrow? So, Costi, on a day like today where, you know, they've already released the lines now for NBA tomorrow, is this like a golden opportunity or is this like, oh, man, you got to really watch out because you don't know. So we don't, we, we don't do any overnights for NBA over the last two years. There's really not a lot of value because of the roster manipulation. You really could get burned. It's You get chances of getting burned on the line much worse than an advantage. So football, it's not the case because they give accurate injury reports. And you kind of know throughout the week, like, all right, going into the week, if this guy is going to play or not play for the weekend. So an NBA, it's, it has nothing to do with injuries. A lot of times it's, it's rest and the injuries are not as big of a, a role. So it's, we don't do it at all. I mean, we're really morning of a lot of times we'll come in after shoot around and bet games. So it's nothing overnight. Okay. Oh, I hear him. I hear him. I hear him. I hear Pathy. I hear him. Knock, knock. Oh, God. Pathy. Pathy who? Freedom. No. <laughs> Let me absolutely. All right. Um, oh, 46 minutes in, giving out one pick. I didn't put a bookmark in for that wrestling, but I'm going to say about 34 minute mark. Wrestling. Shout out Cody Rhodes, man. Shout out Cody Rhodes. Ended the streak. Get that shit out of here. Long streak, though. He gets that long streak. All right, we got Major League Baseball. Kick it off with two games. We've got the Guardians up against the White Sox. And Yankees against the Marlins. Chris, knock, knock. Who's there? Jesus. Jesus who? Jesus Lazardo is going to kick the crap out of the Yankees today. Who do you like in this spot? Uh, in this time spot, I, I, I lean towards the uh, the Guardians, which is that price. It's hard to get behind them on the run line when uh, the White Sox have been known to play a bunch of close games this season. So I think the play for me there is going to be the under seven and a half. Um, I think Tony T mentioned on the weekend, Guardians division unders have been like straight money, like 75% over like the last like 53 or something like that. So the White Sox not necessarily known for a ton of offense. I could easily see this game being like three to two. So I, I'm going to go with the under uh, seven and a half in that White Sox Guardians matchup. We already tell had us. this discussion. Tell, <laughs> we talked tell, about tell, this. Tell. Jay, do you have your glasses? You're in the most famous spot on the planet today. <laughs> You're the only one. Dallas, yeah. Texas, baby. The full eclipse. The cloud goes black at 210 your time. You got your glasses? He said the world's going to end. Why 2 People are like literally flying into Dallas. You can't. You got to drive there. But getting out's like a concert. So you have to be really worried getting out. Because everybody's going to be Mitch leaving just at once. Got him. I like that. <laughs> there, he, there he goes. <laughs> oh, we ready? You know what the worst part is? Those things are so damn flimsy. It's like they're doing the actual eclipse and they fall off. <laughs> <laughs> they said if you look at oh. more than like one second, you're going to go blind. So you better make sure to. Are they? They're not, they're not the Chinese counterfeit ones, are they? I hope not. <laughs> hey, Eric's got his glasses on twenty four seven. They never come off. Eclipse or no eclipse? Those look like the Bret Hart sunglasses. <laughs> they are. They are. He's a big fan. I'm listening to you guys while I'm driving. Never watch one wrestling show ever. What do you watch? Give us, give us a little insight of your life. What do you watch when you go home? I listen to music. I know, but when you don't listen to music, what do you watch? Curb. You don't watch it. Me and only me and Mitch. <laughs> That's it. Like, what do you watch? It's like what do you watch? The screen with the black screen while the music is playing. <laughs> 
Do you do you wear the sunglasses while you watch Curb Your? The Nation? live the live betting screen of the sports book of my choice while I'm listening to music. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> but are you wearing the sunglasses too? Sometimes. Who's <laughs> <laughs> missing? Just checking. <laughs> look the guy. Look at the comment. He watches women through their windows. <laughs> <laughs> But check this out. Take off the glasses. There's another pair of glasses underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those Russian nesting dolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the glasses over the glasses. How about those Orioles, man? Yeah, well, the relievers are not quite there yet. We're missing a, a pivotal reliever. It should be back at the end of the year. Did you have a pick in this one, Costi? Yankees? No, I'm going to get Eric distracted. Sorry, sorry. Um, I'm not betting this game. I can't take. Miami stinks. There's two games. White Sox, Guardians, Marlins. Either one. Uh, this is not on one of the dogs. Then what are you doing here? Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't bet every game. Yeah, but you have uh, over under. You got totals. You got first five yeah, innings. You got yeah, nerf fees. Yeah, yeah. You got player props. You got a lot of different bets here. I'm gonna roof below these first two because Eric's distracting me. You're foolish. No, I don't have a I like the I like the Marlins here against the Yankees. I like them first five for sure. Marlins first five against the Yankees. I think is 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 a gift. Is G I F T gift. Um, I just don't see the Yankees lineup hitting knock knock. I just see see him navigating uh, his way right through it. So I like the under first five innings, and I'll go Marlins first five innings in that one. On the other side, you know, you got Tristan McKenzie against the White Sox. It's weird because the White Sox are a team that they beat, they win the games you you don't expect them to. I'm going to take the White Sox plus the run and a half because you got a, a lot of meat on the bone here. So I'll go against the grain, Jay. I'm on the money, 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 Marlins. I like your first five. Really isolate and get Jesus Lazardo on the mound. I think we should be able to cash there. But I think they actually get it done full game. Um, there's value fading the Yankees right now. You know, are they better than last year? Yes. Um, are they as good as the world wants to portray them to be? I don't know. <laughs> You know, this is a team that didn't make the postseason last year. The Marlins, they did. Are they as bad as they started the season? I don't yeah. think so. I don't think so. I highly doubt it. So is there value on them right now with them being better than what their record suggests? Yes. So I think the Yankees are overvalued. I think the Marlins are undervalued. I think the Marlins come in here and win this baseball game today, giving them that plus money with Lozardo. Sign me up. And then in that other one, um, I kind of like that one and a half, Mitch. I do with the um, with the White Sox. I like the Guardians, but the Guardians they're not an offensive, explosive team. They're not a run line win style team. The White Sox, for as bad as they are, for as many baseball games as they lose, they be competitive sometimes. So I could, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a four three game. I really wouldn't. Um, give me the give me the White Sox plus the run and a half two. I think the Guardians are just overvalued there. All right. How do you spot the squarest guy in the room? Just look for him to say these magic words. How do you spot the how do you spot the five dollar parlay better? How? Magic words. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like it's funny because this guy is calling Jay Yankee hater, whatever. Meanwhile, everything he says is Yankees, 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 Yankees. Well, Just Yankee hater. No one here care. No one here is. No one here is a fan or not a fan. We only care about making money. We're what do you call whores, right? That's basically what we are. And uh, the thing is, is Jay is a, is a Ranger fan. He's not a fan well, or not fan of anybody else. You, your, you do not call me these names. All right. That let's just say you let's no. just say you put money making money on when watching sports above I am everything just else. saying I am a working man. <laughs> I'm not 
four. Okay. okay. <laughs> Gentlemen of the night. It's when you're when you're world's world oldest profession. <laughs> when you're walk when you're walking in a casino and you look over, you ask the girl, are you walking or working? What are you doing? I'm so old. I'm so old they don't they don't even come up to me anymore. Are you walking or working? That's when you know you've turned the corner as far as being old. It's like they don't even come up to and You trying. look like you're working, but you're also walking. So what what are you? <laughs> just sitting in, in the morning machine. and you look like you're, you're just working. sitting in a slot machine. The girl comes up to him and asks what he's doing. In what world do you think? <laughs> oh, I do it all the time as like a joke. And like it's yeah. always funny when I get the excuse me i'm like sorry guess i was wrong i thought you were working. <laughs> guess you're walking okay <laughs> you know, just looks at me like this walking or working Next up, got the Reds and the Brewers and the Pirates and the Tigers. Costi, passing again? No, not going to pass on these two. I'm taking the Pirates at home. I do think they're the real deal. I think Detroit is not. And I think you're still getting value because people are not. They don't have faith in this Pirates team yet. And you're going to start seeing there. Look, they have been one of the best money teams this year obviously coming into a year where they're not supposed to be eight and two and they are you're going to get plus money on them they beat the orioles at home two out of three they beat uh they went to washington one two out of three and then they swept the marlins on the road this team is for real i think that detroit is overvalued because they beat up on the mets who i think are trash um and you're getting a short price I know Keller is not their their top stud, but I'll still take them at home. This team is gritty. They've they hold leads and they've won two games in extra innings against the Orioles. But I think the Orioles are head and shoulders better than Detroit. And the fact that you can get them on a short price at home with Pittsburgh, I'm taking the Pirates here, and, and I'm doing the same with Cincinnati. Um, I think everybody's going to be playing Milwaukee just because they've started off three and zero on the road i think the public more so is going to be on them i think if you can get cincinnati at home on a short price i do like ashcraft over ashby so um probably not a bettable game for me it's not on my board i'm just taking the pirates in the slot but i'll take the home team as well with cincinnati i'm gonna roll with the tigers in this one i think this is a layup and i think mitch keller is uh probably headed to the injured list i think he has elbow problems and i think he's hiding it his velocity has dropped to 90 miles an hour on the top end, and I just don't think that that's going to be good enough against this Tigers lineup. I think he's going to get absolutely rocked like he did last time out, and I think he's probably going to be an early exit, and like I said, a trip to the injured list, and it could be missing the rest of the season because I think there's something seriously wrong there that they're hiding. On the other side, the Reds-Brewers game, I think that this game is probably more competitive. I like the Reds. It's a lean at best. It's not really not the same reasons that Costi said. My reasoning here is that the Brewers starter here, Ashby, is just terrible, man. He's terrible. The Reds, though, really unimpressive over the weekend against the Mets. They just really did not hit the ball at all. Um, and this team's got to hit the ball if they're going to win games. And they didn't. But I expect them to get some hits in this one. But the Brewers are the way better team. Um, just probably not today. So it's one of those spots. All right. Got people here that want to talk to me. So you guys go. Chris, if I'm not back, take over. So a lot of people are going to be mad at me for baseball on my approach this season, but I don't. I think it's, it's going to be well, and we're going to be just fine for the season. I'm starting to look at the dog. I, I'm, I'm looking at the dog in every single game, and I'm talking myself into it. Does the dog have a legitimate chance to win outright in baseball? You start there, I think you'll be just fine. Um, 
So a lot of times, I know a lot of you like your favorite teams. You like the favorite. You think this team is better than that team, and they should win every single day. It doesn't necessarily line up that way. Um, that's why you'll see me take a lot of dogs. Like that's why I'm on the one and nine Marlins today against the Yank eight and two Yankees. With Lozardo on the mound, they have a legitimate chance to do it. And these two, I'm, I think the Tigers Pirates is a 50 50 game. You know, Tigers have played well to start the season. You're going to give me, you know, some value there on the plus money. With them, Faden Keller, sign me up. I like Reese Olsen a little bit too. Um, you know, he's had a solid start to the season. I think, uh, I think we can continue to see that. Keller, already 11 innings pitched, giving up 15 hits. Ah. Ah, I ain't really in love with him, man. I think the Tigers get back on track here. I'm going to attack the plus money there. And then that Brewers-Reds, I don't really see a whole lot of value in this game. I'm not really sure what I'm going to see from Ashby, so not my favorite. I'm probably going to leave that one alone. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Tigers as well here. I, I like Reese Olsen as well. Um I mean, he pitched well on the road for, for a better part of last season. I mean, this is a guy that towards the back end of last season threw six innings of one run ball against the mighty Dodgers, held them to two hits, um, pitched really well. And the thing for me with the Pittsburgh Pirates, yeah, they're off to an eight and two start. I'll give them the credit, but a, yeah, Mitch Keller pitches better at home, but I'm still not a Mitch Keller fan. And B, I think the Baltimore Orioles deserved better than they ended up with in that series. You know, they had a couple of, of you know, choke jobs late in games and the bullpen let them down. But the breaks that Pittsburgh caught against the Baltimore bullpen, I don't think they're going to happen against Detroit. You know, Detroit, second best bullpen ERA in baseball this season, 1.20. Um, they, just, they don't give up many mistakes. And I think Detroit, you know, I think that they got a bad taste in their mouths after, you know, losing two of three against the Oakland A's and getting held to one run in the last two games combined of that series. So I'm going to go with uh, Detroit in that one. And I'm going to... I'm a little bit back and forth on that uh, Milwaukee-Cincinnati matchup. I lean towards Cincinnati. I think at home with the Ashcraft, is used to just pitching in that in that band box in Cincinnati. Um, but I think I like the over nine in that one too. Uh, I think we're going to get some runs there. And Mitch isn't back. So we'll go on to the next two. Um, home opener for the Blue Jays, Rogers Center, taking on the Seattle Mariners. And the Atlanta Braves hosting the New York Mets in an NL East matchup. Jay, what do you like in those two? I know I just talked about t taking the dog, finding value, getting Luis Castillo as a dog is some value, but he hasn't been the Castillo we've known and loved. You know, 10 innings pitch, giving up 16 hits. 6.75 ERA, home opener for Toronto, for the Blue Jays. Jose Barrios has actually looked all right to start the season. Um, I'm going to roll with Toronto, short price at home, home opener. You know, to be, they had a tough ask, you know, to play their first 10 games of the season on the road. So I think getting home, taking a deep breath, Mariners, they haven't been anything really too great. I'm going to um, – Take the Blue Jays there, money line, lay the 120. That Braves Mets, I don't really – doesn't do nothing for me. Um, I don't think the Mets have a legitimate chance to win this game outright. This price is too high for me to bet the Braves. Stay away. Give me the Braves run line in that one. Tehran, you know, faces former team. I mean, it's ironic, you know, where where it last year ended is where it begins again for for Tehran. I mean, this last start came against the Braves last season, gave up nine runs, and what was the number here? I just had it. One sec, I'll pull it back up. I know he was torched. Um, let's see here, nine runs allowed in five innings on eleven hits, three home runs allowed in that start, and I think it's just worth remembering that at one point. Julio Tehran was the ace of this Braves rotation. And even then, he was a guy that was good for a four-plus ERA year in and year out, a 500 record. So he's never really been the guy. He's never been he, – he's been an ace by sort of being forced into the situation, but he's never had ace-level talent or ace-level numbers to back that up. Charlie Morton, 
you know, he's he's been, I would say, a little bit underrated for that for that uh, that Braves rotation. Pretty good starter to be your what number three or number four in that in that fold. Um, he'll probably have to to eat up a lot more innings now with with the potential for. I think it's I think it's Tommy John for Spencer Strider. I didn't see if that was confirmed or, or at all or not, but I I think he's I think he's going to be out for the year. Um, there's damage to his UCL. Usually means Tommy John. Um, and I think Charlie Morton's going to be a decent enough option to eat, eat up those innings. So I, I like the Braves there to beat up on the Mets. And yeah, I'll go with the Blue Jays in the home opener. Call me a homer, whatever. I they've been waiting to get back home. Like Jay said, they had a, they had a tough gauntlet for their first 10 games. I mean, road series against the Yankees and the Rays and even against the Houston Astros. I mean, the, the, the names are still there from past season. They just weren't getting a lot of the same results. So tough, tough 10 game road trip to start the season, but the, uh, the renovations are done at the Rogers center. They're going to be pumped to get back home. Home opener in Toronto is usually a big deal. Give me the blue Jays. Costi. Yeah, I'm I'm with opening day here with the Blue Jays. I think uh, Barrios has uh, it's a better pitcher, and I think the relievers uh, will hold it together. And the, the Seattle team is not coming out of the gate scoring a lot of runs. Um, I like the opener at home. You're getting a short price anytime you get a opening day opener, and you're not laying a big price. That I always like taking that team almost automatically. Um, and the other game, it, this doesn't excite me as well. Uh, I, I'm not a proponent of taking any team laying 200. Do I think Atlanta can win this game? Yes, easily. Um, but in, in a baseball season, it's not about individual games. It's about playing the long game. And you'll never see me take 200 at home, let alone taking minus one and a half at home, knowing I'm not getting the bottom of the nine. So. Uh, it's just one of these things that I follow a strategy year round and there's too many games to at any point deviate from that. So uh, I'm not touching that Mads Atlanta game. Give Mitch a five second timer to see if he comes back before we move on to the next games. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see here. Move on to target field. The Dodgers. Visiting Minnesota, Bailey Ober getting his start pushed back, and oh boy, um, and the Phillies and the Cardinals. Uh, I think I'm up first here. I'm gonna go with the Dodgers on the road. Um, I didn't like the matchup for Bailey Ober against the Guardians, a team that's not necessarily known for you know a ton of offense. Uh, but Ober, the problem for Ober is that normally you know he. He's, he's fully capable of, of pitching an ace level start, but there are times where he just leaves those pitches hanging over the plate. And, uh, you know, you don't want to do that against Cleveland, but you really don't want to do that against the Dodgers. Um, James Paxton, yeah, a nice start. I mean, we'll have to see how he carries it into, into Minnesota, but the Twins' offense far too inconsistent for me to consider backing. And the Dodgers are getting a reasonable price here. So give me the Dodgers on the road. And give me the over eight and a half in that uh, Phillies Cardinals matchup. I don't trust Spencer Turnbull or Miles Michaelis as far as I can throw them. I think the uh, the bats break out in that game, so give me the over. Costi, yeah, I think uh, what you're seeing with the Dodgers right now because they've had uh, you know a mediocre road start. Um, they lost two out of three at Chicago. You're still getting that decent value on the road with them. I'm not even going to lay the actual money line. I'm going to do the minus one and a half on the road. I, I don't mind doing that knowing I'm getting the ninth inning regardless. You're getting a plus 120 price here with the Dodgers. I think they they absolutely obliterate Minnesota. And uh, I could see this being a 6-2, 7-2 win for them. I don't like the other game. I'm not betting it, so I'm passing on that one. Mitch, you missed Blue Jays, Mariners, Mets, Braves. And we're talking about Dodgers, Twins right now. Yeah, the, the Braves game is unbettable unless you're going to go minus two and a half or more. Um, I think at one and a half, you can't even get plus money, right? So, so one, Minus 110. 
Minus one minus one ten. Yeah, so it's unbettable yeah. at minus a run and a half. It's if anyone that does that, I'm embarrassed for you. Um, on the other side, um, <laughs> what's well, just a stupid bet? I mean, it's just stupid. You're betting to not lose. You're not betting to win. You're betting to not lose. There is no positive payout <laughs> to it. So why would you lay the run and a half? It's like, and if you're afraid of losing, then why would you bet it with a full board of games? It just doesn't even make sense. This is the dumbest logic I've ever heard. Um, but anyways. I second that logic. Um, bet it. Yeah. So for me, it's like, you, you can't bet on Tehran, but you can lay, I, if you're going to bet it, lay the two and a half or even three and a half in this one. And I would also lay extended in the first few innings as well. Um, I think that, you know, I, I think that we'll see that. But Charlie Morton, generally a slow starter too. So, you know, tough to say. James Paxton against Bailey Ober. I like the Ober, 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 man, and over. <laughs> Way over. Um, James Paxton's a stiff, man. This guy, I, I like the under in innings pitch for the season for James Paxton. This guy, I mean, I think he was born with a twinge in his elbow. I, I, I'm telling you, man. It's like this guy never ever makes it and Spencer Turnbull is offensive man it, the, the fact that the Phillies would even reel him out and try and pass him off as a legitimate major league baseball starter I'm going with the Cardinals in that one and uh the over same game parlay um Spencer Turnbull joke man I mean he, last year sporting that 7.26 ERA in Detroit 31 innings, 37 hits, 28 runs allowed in 31 innings. I'm embarrassed for him. That's like almost an, a run an inning. That's a, that's pathetic. The guy struck out 24 over 31 and 15 walks. I mean, in what world, man, is this guy even a legitimate major league starter? He had the one year in 2021 where he had the 2.88 ERA, and he's still living off of it. I'm embarrassed for him. I'm gonna have to take. I'm gonna have to take the other side there. Miles Michaelos, who I don't even know how to pronounce his name correctly. Only thing I like here, I'm taking the uh, the LA Dodgers. I'm gonna lay the run line with the Dodgers. Hey, I'm getting plus money doing so. So, you feel me? Um, I think they kicked the crap out of the Twins. They kicked the crap out of Bailey Ober. 50 50 20. Yeah, but you got James. Pa See, this is the this is the mistake that you made the other day, you know, on yesterday's card. Is that I agree with you. Bailey Ober is is, is a hot mess. All right. Let's call it what it is. Let's go. We'll call the spade a spade. We'll call him a hot mess. You know, fuck Bailey Ober. Whatever. The whole thing. It doesn't make James Paxton any better. <laughs> you know, that's the whole thing. You still got you still got Paxton, you know, which means you could be in the bullpen. You could be because this guy is known for on the second and third pitch for walking off the field and missing half the season. At least. Fair. Fair. Uh, but as my argument from back earlier in the season, you have to be able to pick your spots to be okay with laying it with the Dodgers. There, cause there's going to be spots this season where that Dodgers offense just absolutely unloads. So – Getting plus money on the run line against a guy like Ober, you have to, you know, pick your spots. You just have to do it. Ober, one one and one, one point one innings pitch, nine hits and one K, three home runs. Bro, that's gonna do that shit against the Dodgers. You're gonna be down five oh in the first inning. <laughs> yeah, but look at Jimmy Paxton, man, last year. The thing is I mean, he's regressing, man. He he's same thing. He's living off 2019, man. 2019, 3.82. He's regressed every year with his ERA, 6.75. He missed the whole season because he tw had the twinge in the elbow. He had the twinge in the elbow the year before. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's like it's early, it's early in the season. I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. The Twins lineup doesn't really scare me. His first outing was was a solid outing. You know, five innings, four hits, no earned runs, no runs scored. I feel like I can trust him in this spot. I'm mainly trusting the Dodgers offense. I would lay the run line, get the plus money. I would play three runs here. This is a pure fate of Bailey Ober and trusting the Dodgers offense. We know they're going to explode in certain games. I think this may be one of those. I don't know, man. 
Dodgers on the road. 50-50 twins, though. Fading the twins' ass, you know. Love it. Love it. I think Raul likes the Yankees. I'd like Raul Howell to do six. I mean, seriously. It's like, God, can give Yankees pajamas? This guy's a front runner all the way. Mookie Betts, one plus hits. Yeah, he got an ugly part like Yankees, Dodgers, Guardians, bro. Fading your ass. Like David Miller would say, square alert. Yeah. Square, square alert. 40. <laughs> How Public many winning wins, seasons have you had Public batting wins, baseball, man? Public That's wins, like, too. Y'all know I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Public. I love the public. I'll be with the public, but. My square is not great, but. That looks like a that looks like a stretched out vagina. <laughs> How would you know what a stretched out vagina looks like, Mitch? <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> it's a costume square. It's a costume. Yeah, I'm just K Diddy square. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> That's right. Seriously. Let's hold it together, fellas. It's Monday. <laughs> We've got all week of this. <laughs> it's Masters so, week. We don't even discuss that. It's, it's always le- no one watches golf on TV. What are you? This is the. Uh, what are you talking about? Nobody, nobody watches golf. golf nobody on TV. Watches. We don't even. They even even the golfers are ta- all they're talking about is that no one watches golf on TV. <laughs> like, that 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 I saw in the ESPN story is that the golfers are talking about no one watches golf. How about if you if you take the attitude uh, out of your asshole, you know, <laughs> and be a real person? How about that? Maybe that will get people to watch. Maybe have a little bit of personality instead of telling people to shut up all the time. Like maybe that would endear you to some people instead of your country club stuffy ass, you know, bitch ass attitude. It's like, oh my god, man, those guys are just ridiculous. It's like, it... seriously, man. Get Still over. waiting. Do you think Bobby's gonna overnight me these Masters tickets? So I'm gonna go. <laughs> just, just he might. To figure out. He might. Still Did waiting. Did you ask him? I, I've asked him three different times. It's like the first time I asked, second time I was like, let me, you know, I asked. Third time was like being pushy. It's like, next year, next year. Call him. <laughs> Bro. Jay gets up for two minutes. There's seven Cokes with seven glasses of ice. Just there's, stand there. There's no, uh, <laughs> no one watches golf. Who's favored to win? Um, Scotty Scheffler. See, who is he? Would you know him? Would anybody know him in our audience of all the people watching the show? Probably not. If Scotty Scheffler walked by you in a casino floor, would you recognize him? Yes. Yeah, but anybody else? Watch the game. Yeah, probably not. Anybody else? Probably. And that's the problem. I get it. These guys are not approachable people. They, they have created a stigma around them that they're not people you can cheer for because they all are exactly the same. They all wear these hats with whatever. Jack never wore the hat, man. He didn't, was, Jack wasn't like a billboard for all these things. Neither was Arnie, man. It's like these guys, everything that they, is just a big billboard for a bunch of like, and they're not even like billboards for like stuff that their audience or that people that you would, if you wanted to build an audience could relate to. It's not like Coca-Cola or Gatorade or something like that. It's some accounting firm or something, you know, KPMG or something, you know. It's like right. you, making you even more unlikable. And I know a th- few things about getting people to not like me. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because before the show we were talking – Jay's like, I'm going to do what you do, man. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to say, I didn't even find out what it was, you know, before he even let me know what it was. I was like, I'll tell you this much. The same thing they call me a piece of shit that hates life more. They're going to think you're the coolest guy on the planet for. <laughs> it's like, it's 20, 2024 is your year, Mitch. I'm telling you. Very positive. 
We also haven't had an NFL season yet, so I, I'm still waiting to see. The jury's out. I'm positive. You know what I'm? You know what I'm thinking about doing this NFL season? What's that? I'm gonna. I might. I might uh, dust off the bipolar bears and uh, enter the fantasy world. No. <laughs> no. Nah, hell no. Nah. You're not in hell. hell. Yeah. He ain't doing that. Nah. He yeah. Ain't doing that. Yeah. Do you guys. Jay and uh, Chris, you guys do fantasy football? Jay does. You kidding? Jay's the hype train, man. He loves that. Stuff. I do a little bit jump, of it. Chris, da- Chris dabbles. Neither of them like to say it too loud around me. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we dabble in it. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't do DFS. I do like <laughs> No, we know. We know you're like, you get along with all the guys that wear the same clothes with the Merces. You sit around a room and act like you're all cool and shit. Eat a cu- order a couple chicken wings, call each other bro. And then, you know, you have your little draft. And then all season long, you argue about these five dollar transaction moves and who did what that i this is this is this so is what you basically this done. were 10 for 10 <laughs> Except <Excellent. laughs> <laughs> we don't argue about transaction rules that's it because you know why we don't argue about it i'm the commissioner it's very plain it's like it's like riding a bike i don't play around the entries there People pay big money. If you make a big money league, people don't complain. You make how much is the league, entry? How much is the entry? It has been a thousand, but now it's going up. It like constantly goes up. All right, let's. I'll, I'll enter. I'll, you have room for one more? Squeeze I don't me right now, but let's, we may next year. Let's make it five. I'll go in if you make it so five. I have I have a league that's five. All right, well I'll enter that one. It's it's cool. And All we right, do I'll the draft. That. It's uh, it's in Florida, so you're in Florida. I'll do. I'll, well, we'll do it if it's um. For if it's five, I'll do it. Winner take all, or consolation um, prizes. No, there's, there's not consolation, but it's like uh, regular season most points you get paid. Because the playoffs. I want five thousand twelve team league winner take all. That's when I played fantasy. Well, that's you what can't I can't make these demands. Like if you're gonna get in the league, you kind of have to like go by the rules. <laughs> Just like I got a Unless list of demands. Your league, league. And make it five thousand. I don't want to. Well, it's five thousand plus. Hundred dollar transaction fee, winner take all. So we don't do a, we do a free agent bidding system. So you start out with a certain amount of money, and it's blind bidding. So if the players you get on Tuesday, well, I already like, put my five grand in to get in. I'm willing to pay a hundred bucks for for my transactions. You have anything over the money you spent? Uh, I'll explain it to you off air. But it's I, I'm not <laughs> sure you're quite there yet. I'm not sure you're quite there. There's a sounds lot of like demands. Right? Sounds like you guys are cutting corners and giving out participation trophies. We do not get the only participation trophy you have to participate in is if you're last place. You have to. Oh, I'm not playing that shit. If you're last place, you, you lost it's six just, grand it's, like it's everybody just else. Just a, a medium unicorn t shirt that keeps getting passed down year to year. You have to wear to the draft. It's nothing crazy. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Just hit him in the hit him in the wallet a couple times. <laughs> just hit him in the I think balls. The, I think the loser should have to pay for the draft party the next year. That would be a better prize than some unicorn T-shirt. All the catering, everything else, you know, make cap it out at like I don't know twelve thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you have the white goose, stone crab, lobster tails. You know, I'm telling you, I had the. It was tater tots with caviar on them. They were out of this world. I didn't even understand the combo until I ate it. Tater tots. Well, I know I know who can tell you what the uh, the secret, the best toppings for tater tots are. Chris, what you, cheese and tater tots? Yes or no? <laughs> Here we go. I have a source. <laughs> There really is, and you want you like you're the commissioner of the fantasy league. There really is no opposition here. This is pretty much. Right. This is, so, it begins and ends. Here's, right here's, here. here's here's my thought process. First question: You going for texture? Or you going for flavor? <laughs> because well, if you're going for texture, you just leave the tater tots alone. Flavor, or you maybe put something very okay. There you go. Okay, salt? So, no salt. You can smother them in something. Now, are you a cheese person? Yes. Well, everyone's a cheese person. When okay. It comes to tots. Okay. Jay I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
All right, go ahead. Well, Jay, the tribe has spoken. Well, Jay, um, you're going to have caviar on your tops? I mean, seriously. Oh, the caviar, Jay, with the Cartiers on with the Caviar, Cartier, Chartier, Tots. <laughs> eating tater tots with a pinky up. Um, okay. What about chili? Are you an aversion to chili? I'm not, I don't need the chili on the tots. No. How about separate. ketchup? That's, that's normal. Hey. That's so how, you know how about what? like a loaded I, baked potato tater tot? I could do that. I, see, I, that's kind of where I was going next. You, but see, did. here's the thing. You can't do cheese. Okay, it's weird. You can't do cheese and ketchup like that. No. You guys are it making it. Works it works for a cheeseburger. Put but some caviar on them. Like... That's the salt. It, it, it looks cool. Move on to the next. This isn't a breakfast thing. We were eating it as an appetizer before the Delmonico steak. So this is an appetizer. Oh. This was this was delicious. Goodness. Um just leave it alone. Now, one one last question. We're we're I'm sidetracking it a little bit. Okay. Do you guys have hip hop chicken in Texas, Jay? No. So they put this thing on the fried chicken. It's called crack. And it's like this like seasoning. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's like you ask, you're like, I want more crack or less crack. Maybe it's a Baltimore thing. I don't know. Because crack is really relevant in Baltimore in general. But it's like you want more crack or less crack? This thing, I don't know what kind of seasoning it is. It's so good. Jay doesn't care as long as there's no fucking pickles on that thing. <laughs> you don't even want it on the plate. It's not picking oh, the pickle oh, off. The famous, That's not famous happening. Maryland. More crack. Yeah. More crack. I thought you were going to say it was like Old Bay or something like that. Yeah, I don't, it's not Old Bay, man. I, I don't know what it is. I get. I was asking because I don't know if you guys have it in the, in your state, but I guess it's it's a Maryland thing. Lemon pepper. I'm being told. Yeah, I'm not much of a lemon pepper person. I love lemon pepper. What was Jay saying about betting favorites? He says he's not going to bet any more favorites. I will bet the occasional favorite, but the Dodgers for the most, you took today. I laid the run line though, getting plus money. Um, you know what I mean? That's kind of how I'm trying to attack it. Um, you know, minus 140 is probably the biggest favorite you'll really see me take all season in baseball. I think the value is with the dogs. Mitch, Mitch has gotten to me. He has. He just has gotten to me. Now, you're gonna. it's going to be a long season. You're going to take some bad beats. You're going to take some terrible beats. But over the full course of the season, we'll be just fine. Plus so less crack. crack. More crack or less crack, Jay? None. None? No. I'm telling you, the lemon pepper. <laughs> lemon pepper. No NBA today, man. I'm kind of sad, man. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow, though, with 14 game court. <laughs> That Lakers Warriors tomorrow is huge. Huge. All right. Rangers. What's up, Chris? Max Rockies. What's next? Uh, Astros, Rangers, and. Diamondbacks, Rockies. I think it's Costi first this time. I don't. I don't mess with the Rockies when they're at home, especially this early in the season. Uh, I, I'm just staying away. The, this Arizona bullpen has burned me two times in the weekend. Like the solar eclipse would burn my eyes if I look straight at it, Jay. I will not. Touch that game with a ten foot pole, and in the other game, give me the give me the dog at home. And yesterday was uh, was a day where the bats were really cold for Texas. Couldn't even get a hit till the fifth inning. So I, I see that switching, and they they'll get it back today. Give me the dog at home plus one twenty.
Yeah. What's it from? That's from uh, Back to the Future. Where we're going? There are no roads. <laughs> Great Scott. <laughs> Mitch, what do you like here? What are the games? Uh, Astros, Rangers, Diamondbacks, Rockies. I like the Diamondbacks minus two and a half. You get plus 120 on that one. And I like Andrew Heaney and the Rangers. The Astros bullpen, no bueno. I like the uh, I like the Rangers here. I think Heaney, you know, last year I thought Bochy did a really nice job with Heaney late in the season. If he started to see him struggle, he didn't care if it was the third or fourth inning. He got him the hell out of there. He didn't leave him in there to get absolutely pummeled. We know that Heaney has good high-end stuff. He is a strikeout guy. Um, so I think you could probably lay reverse run line here with the Rangers. Now you're talking my language. Now you're talking my language. I'm on the Rangers, man. We lost yesterday. We did. So what? Uh, there's still no reason we should be a dog at home, bro. Stop it, bro. Stop disrespecting us. Stop disrespecting us. We've been the much better team all season. We've already run lined their ass twice in this series, and yet we're a dog at home, bro. I understand it's heen dog on the mound, but, I mean, the Dodgers are favored on the road with goddamn whoever they got on the mound today. You know what I mean? Like, that, that'd be my argument, like. If they're going to price the damn Dodgers, Braves, Phillies, the way they be pricing them, and but then turn around and disrespect my Rangers like this, the World Series champ, dog at home, sign me up. That's the value I'm looking for all season. It's a value game. It's a value game. It's a long baseball season, 162 games. The good team does not win every day in baseball. That, quite honestly, they lose. <laughs> More often than you may believe. <laughs> Games they got no business losing, they lose all the time. <laughs> all the fucking time. I'm taking the uh I'm taking the Rangers here. There's no reason the Astros should be favored. What time is the eclipse over there? Two thirty. Okay. Can you FaceTime me? Do you think there's an app on the phone through the FaceTime that's got the glasses already on? <laughs> I feel like I'm a part of. It's a filter. It's already a filter. Oops. <laughs> That's the app. <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> Did the eclipse got us? <laughs> I thought that was the actual. That was right. Oh, that was Rich's version of the filter. For the <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am jealous yeah, that they were they were underpriced. But I just be trying to. I'll be trying to explain it to y'all. <laughs> Give me the Rangers. Oh, I thought you were going to take the Astros. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. I'm still bitter about yesterday. Couldn't hit the damn water pickle out of a boat. Blanco, status you know, Buck, solid Alex. He did, you know. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. I think the Trash 2017 Kansas. eclipse, I was in the water. I was surfing. And I saw it. Yeah, I, had, I bought the glasses from 7 Eleven. I, you know, I looked up. I saw the moon <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It gave me no validation for whatever I was trying to achieve in that moment. And I moved on with my day. Hopefully Jay has a better experience with a 220. <laughs> I just I, I don't really care to see like the sun in front of the moon. I just want to see if it goes dark during the day. That's time what I'm gonna yeah. see. Go, go in your room, pull the shades down, <laughs> flip the light switch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have an eclipse every single day of the Every year. day. It's called the <laughs> office eclipse. <laughs> Look, watch. <laughs> it's Eclipse, Mitch. Not Eclipse. Eclipse. <laughs> That's funny. This is like usually when Jay calls this, me in the mornings. It's usually during the eclipse. It's like this, he's just like underneath the covers. 
talking about last night? This is this is me like after I've had major surgery or uh, got into an accident or something. I've done a lot of shows like this before. Accident with yourself and the pavement. Yeah, almost a year ago. That's when I met you. I met you during. It might have been like a week after or something. It couldn't have been like a week or two after the accident when I landed on my head. Yeah, the rollerblading. I'm retired. Yeah, give me the uh, give me the Rangers here. I, I just feel disgusting about it, but oh, oh, I oh, God. There we go. All right, put on your glasses, Jay. See what you see. See, look at that through your glasses. See what happens. Because I see a black. Thing is, yeah, you can't see nothing through these glasses. Can't see that's can. all. That's exactly it. So it will be dark for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's like, I should have worn my Cartier's. <laughs> <laughs> you probably those are better. Try the Cartier's and try those. Do, at least try both. I think I saw something on Cartier that said they have Eclipse glasses too now. <laughs> Nah, let's just kill off. I'm getting Cartiers. I'm gonna. I got red bottom More. shoes. I'm. Jo- I'm playing. Ready to play fantasy football. You don't have red bottoms. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Right here. I showed them to you. <laughs> it's it's okay, sunburn. man. Don't be a hey. Don't be a hater. <laughs> I can get a red bottom shoe. How much are they? I oh, forget. It. It's one of those <laughs> things. If you have to ask how much they are, you can't afford them. Okay, then I can't afford it. <laughs> just don't ask. What the hell? You just can't, walk in. Nah, you just can't. I can't afford it. I've already made it clear. I asked how much it is. Depends what kind you want. You want the tennis shoes? Do you want the boots? I don't want don't. any of them. I just want to. I just want to shut you guys up. Um, the shoes are like around like eight eight hundred to twelve hundred. All right. Well, that's not that much. I don't think. I thought they'd be like four thousand bucks. He can't dress himself right. JX, uh, you are quite wrong, my friend. What? He (laughs) says, I can't dress myself right. It's okay. He he forgets that I'm Ukrainian, where it's like we had to, growing up, it was like everybody had to be decked out. And all the fancy schmancies. Some of these Cartier sunglasses are like thirty five hundred. I think it's a waste for sunglasses, in my opinion. That's I went with the old man approach. Now I go with the Costas that like really protect my eyes, rather than like the fancy names. They're just so much better. Like with driving, so much better. My driving is so much better. You're, you could be the worst driver in America. Thanks. I, I mean, I not many people could take that. Like, I don't feel safe. And usually that's, it takes a lot for me not to feel safe. What are you trying to say? Just probably not going to drive with you. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to say. Right. But no, I'm not Italian, Ukrainian. 25% Armenian, 75% Ukrainian. Born in Kiev. All right, Chris, what do we got? Anything else? Yeah, last three. Um, let me see where I was on here. Uh, Rays, Angels, Cubs, Padres, and Nationals, Giants. Mitch, I think it's you first here. I like I like the Rays. Tyler Anderson's a stiff, and I think the Rays unload on him. Um, Tyler Anderson had one good season. Um, it was with the Dodgers. Outside of that, he's a four, high four, low five ERA guy, and he's going to get absolutely demolished in this one. 
Thank you, Ray's. Start with the dog. When I start with the dog, I see the Angels, the team many people thought were going to be terrible. They have not been, so they've been all right. The Rays, many people think, are still, you know, going to win their division, you know. But I see them as a 5-5 five and five team. I still see the Rays overvalued. I think the Angels at home have a legitimate shot to win this game outright. Even with Tyler Anderson, I have to attack the plus money there, fading an overrated, overvalued Rays team and taking an underrated, undervalued Angels team. I have to take the Cubs at the plus money. They've been the better team to start the season at plus money. I do love you, Darvish. I do love me some you, Darvish. I do. I do. But the Padres, man, they're the Padres. And the Cubs, they've been hitting the baseball well to start the season. I see no reason to get off the Cubs right now until they show some signs of regression, especially not at the plus money. Give me the Cubbies. Mr. Plus Money, I am. I'm not trying to fade Blake Snell, though. I ain't got that in me. I ain't got that in me. So. <laughs> Stay away. I have it in me, but not to take the, the Nationals here. I'm going to take the over in that game. Um, I think the Giants tee off on Trevor Williams here, but I think Washington can get a few runs off of Blake Snell. Blake Snell didn't get to take part in spring training because he only signed his contract, like, just before opening day or like a few days before opening day. So, um, yeah, I think it's still going to take him a little bit to get back used to game speed. And uh, I think could have a high-scoring game there. I think seven and a half is a little bit light for that one. So, give me the over in Washington, San Francisco. And I'm going to take the Rays as well. I know they have felt a little bit overvalued. You know, they're still laying juice on the road at five and five. But, yeah, Mitch is right. Tyler Anderson, this is usually a guy that's going to give you a five-plus ERA Year in and year out, that that one year with the Dodgers was, you know, a, it looks more and more like a fluke more than anything. So, give me the raise here. To me, yes, yep. No, it's uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on the Rays Angels game. Give me give me the Cubbies here. This this San Diego team Cubs are like two and thirty seven in the last thirty nine road games. They're like one of the worst road teams over the last year. Again, I don't have this game on my board. I already gave out my games for the day, but you guys say I have to break down the games, so I'm breaking down the games so I don't have to keep. Well, that's what we do when we're not kibitzing about other things. Yeah, I'm just just saying. Good old the good old kibitz. Yeah, we haven't broke that one out in a while. Take the (laughs) Cubs. Cubs Nationals plus one eighty plus one sixteen. <laughs> Have a nice kid it's with, a, with a nice cold Schlitz. Schlitz. <laughs> PBR. The beer that made Milwaukee yeah. famous. The problem that the Cubs have right now is that. They lost their number one in the rotation, so everybody's got to move up. So they're going to have mismatches all throughout their rotation. They're done. And also, before we do the parlays, to the winner, I'm going to be contacting you tomorrow of the contest for the brackets. Um, I will personally get you taken care of because you will be getting some bonus packages from the online pick dogs as well, where you get the payment as well as Jay for the NBA playoffs, all access. You get the rest of NHL season with Ruffalo. So they will be added to your subscription. And dinner with Pathy. Why, why dinner with Pathy. We got it. We're, we're trying beef, to still figure out the why details. Beef additional charge. It's an mm-hmm. extra charge. That that dinner, like the food was a very subpar, but the table was great. Yeah, it's that's it's all about the table. That was the Grand Canyon. It's always about the table, man. Like that me was, and Brad said, man. All state money it line. Script. It was all part of the script. It was all <laughs> part of it. We're sitting there. We're every, we got Grand Canyon big as the first round. Utah State. I'm yelling. The guy that I gave my parlay to ended up taking his own plane home <laughs> early. 
going, I'm like, Mike, I had to cash the ticket for me. I'm like, what happened? He's like, it's the winds, man. Literally just got in his own plane and left early in the morning. So right now, um, let me see. We it's got locked in his area. Blue. We weren't there. We uh, locked it, out. It's a competition, man. Um, it looks like there's like six people in it. It's gonna come down to final score because there's six people. The top set, the top seven people right now. Three got UConn. Three got Purdue. Mm. One has Iowa State, so they're done. But they not in it anymore. That's Jay. <laughs> no, they're, they're the, the person in fourth place had Iowa State as the winner, but they had a lot of points. They had, but there's no way they can win. Um, so there's about six people live right now. Three That's guy exciting. UConn, three guy two. If anybody wants to contact me and wants to cash out early, I'll get you the dinner with Pathy regardless. But you're not part of the contest. <laughs> Why go beef? <laughs> Additional <laughs> Just saying, if you want to cash out early, you can come. Go ahead and hedge. Go I'll take, take you out of the car. <laughs> if you want to hedge, somebody said earlier, do I hedge or cash out? I don't normally, but if you want dinner with Pathy, I'll cash it. I'll cash you out. All right, parlay time. Parlay, parlay, parlay. All right. Go with the under in the White Sox Guardians, the Toronto Blue Jays, and the Texas Rangers. All right. I'm going to go Texas Rangers, Arizona Diamondbacks. Angels, Nationals. Tigers, Cubs, Angels, three dogs. Going to go Marlins first five, UConn first half, and the under in the game. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. It's been special. Talked a little wrestling. A little Shout wrestling. out Cody Rhodes. Shout out Cody Rhodes. Talk Charlie. How's Ace. Lindsay doing? Who's Daniel? Tell me. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me who you are. I will gladly tell you what she's doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Daniel with no last name. Show yourself. That is, on that note, thanks everyone for joining us. Make it a winning day. We appreciate it. We don't give Rufalo any ideas here. Appreciate every each and every one of you. Let's wait, make wait, it wait, a winning wait, wait, wait. day. I'm going to try and act more professional tomorrow. We might even give out some picks. We got a monster card tomorrow. Um, and uh, once again, shout out to everyone that joined us for the uh, college hoops all season long. We could actually do a halftime show. Maybe if it's competitive. If the game's within 10 points at halftime, we'll come on to the show. <laughs>